Alléluia. It shall be your night. Tonight shall be your night. Every time we gather in Zion, blessings are distributed. You are collecting yours. This will be your own anniversary. In the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, thank you tonight. Thank you, thank you Jesus. Thank you, thank you for this glorious day. All our eyes are on you. Show us your word. By your light, let us see light. Amen. Let no one return without an encounter with you. Amen. Tonight, heal the sick. Amen. Set free the captives. Amen. Move every one of us forward. Amen. And let your name be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let me give the Lord a big hand of praise. I'm pleased you may be seated. It's my joy to be here tonight to be part of this glorious anniversary service. And my prayer is that um, everyone present and everyone online with us around the world will be blessed in return. Amen. It's not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. So every time we're invited by him, we are brought to come over to him for a blessing. Blessed is the man that you cause to approach unto thee. He shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. May the goodness of tonight find expression into everyone's life. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. In him is life. And that life is the light of men. That life shows men which way to go. And that life shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it now. That was the true light, verse 9, that lights every man that comes to this world. Tonight we shall all be lighted. Amen. Tonight we're all going forward. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I'm speaking tonight on a subject that will be a blessing to all of us. And it's captioned, Engaging the Creator's Manual for sustainable impact and relevance. No one will ever lose relevance in his life. Amen. Every believer is redeemed a candidate for impact. We are called the light of the world, the salt of the earth. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. We are not the salt of heaven. We are the salt of this earth. We are not the light of heaven. We are the light of this dark world. That implies every child of God is redeemed. A candidate of impact. Not just to be successful, but to be impactful, to be a blessing to people. God is changing each one's story tonight. Amen. Jesus said, if you believe in me, the works that I do shall you do also. And greater works than these 
shall ye do. Greater works than these shall ye do. His impact is still speaking on the earth today. Over 2,000 years that he left. Very late, very, and I, he said, take it serious. If you believe in me, the words that I should do shall ye do also. And greater works than these shall ye do. Because I go unto my Father. We have a most elastic destiny in the redemption. Most elastic destiny. Matthew 10, 11, 11, of all born of women, that is not as great as John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom, greater than he. Think of all those great patriarchs. He that is least in the kingdom, greater than he. Think of all those great prophets that set the pace for what is happening today in the body of Christ. Greater, none is as great as John the Baptist. That tells us how elastic our destiny in Christ is. Again, he said the path of the justified as a shining light that shines more and more and more and more and more to the perfect day. You never know a backward trend anymore. Yeah. Your life from now will keep going forward. Yeah. Your business will keep going forward. Yeah. Your spiritual life will keep going forward. Yeah. That's God's agenda for us. And as a seed of Abraham, we are redeemed to be a blessing to the world. And in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So every seed of Abraham is a global citizen of the earth. Amen. Amen. And that's where you are going. Amen. No one here shall be a burden to his world, Amen. but a blessing to your world. Amen. But a blessing to your world. The Bible is God's manual for profitable living. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable in doctrine, in reproof, in correction, and instructions unto righteousness. Profitable. Profitable. No guesswork. Profitable. So God's word is sent for profitable living. He's a creator. Before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. Before you came out of your mother's womb, I separated thee and ordained thee. So he's in charge. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. He's a creator. And this is the manual for his creature to maximize his adventure on the earth. Those who live by the word can but make impact. Living by the word makes a believer a man of impact. Living by the word. Living by the word. Living by the word makes a man of impact. Living by the word makes a man of impact. In Hebrews chapter 4, and verse 2, the word preached to us was all preached to them, but did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that had it. That means it's designed to profit us, but that profit is drawable by faith. And faith simply means putting God's word to work. Faith is not just believing God, faith is obeying God to prove that we believe him. Faith is obeying God to prove that we believe him. People say, I'm believing God. No, no. You obey God to prove that you believe him. Show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Abraham wasn't singing when God said, Depart, he departed. When he said, Take Isaac, your son, offer him as a sacrifice, he moved. And he's the father of faith. He's the example of how faith works. So faith is not just believing God. Faith is obeying God to prove that we believe him. So we can draw maximally of the profit treasures in the world by living by the word. 
put in the world to work as a lifestyle. Again, my prayer is that tonight shall be a night to be much remembered in your life. Yeah. He said in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and verse 7 to 10, I breached. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, but the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be dealt away with, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious, or be more glorious? If the ministry of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness excel in glory. Amen. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by the reason of the glory that excels. So we are in the era of the glory that excels. I say, we are in the era of the glory that excels. Far above everything we saw as glorious in the Old Testament. Far above. So they will mark the end of every form of shame and reproach in everyone's life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This is simply pointing also the fact that we are in the greatest season of life as the coming of Christ draws near. And all we need to do is to be awake out of every form of spiritual slumber so as to make the most of our portion in this era. If this is so, why do we have men in the body of Christ who never tasted success, talk less of impact. Remember, the cross costless shall not come. That's what I call recently the affliction of ignorance. Ignorance is a, is a worse disease than any physical disease you can think of. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are in captivity for lack of knowledge. Isaiah 5 from verse 13. My people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Captivity here connotes imprisonment. Being etched in, kept on the same spot. We'll see at chapter 4, verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because I've rejected my word, I've also rejected you. That you don't know it does not make, it's not an excuse. He who knows the will of his father and does not do it shall be given many stripes. And he who does not know shall be given a few stripes. So it's not free because he doesn't know. It's not. So it's time to come awake. I lay before you, said life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. And thou and thy seed, that thou and thy seed may live. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19. Choose life. We understand in the nature of the light. The dominion of light over darkness is instant and unquestionable. Whenever light steps in, darkness steps out. The entrance of his word gives light and gives understanding to the simple that makes life outstanding. It makes life outstanding. Arise and shine, your light is come. The glory of the Lord is written upon thee. Darkness may cover the earth and cross the the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and the glory shall be sent upon thee. The Gentiles will come to your light, and they are kings to the brightness of your light. Life 
It shall be said of you, who are these that fly as a cloud? We don't fly by a skill in the kingdom. We fly by light. We fly by light. Isaiah 60 verse 8. Although thou was forsaken, no one went through thee, but I will make thee an eternal excellency, the joy of many nations, joy of many generations. Now a little one by light shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. So light has power to make a strong nation of a person, a strong nation. Men that by grace emerge stronger than nations. That's God's word. Abraham followed God and followed his word to become a nation. Had an army that could overrun an army of a nation. Isaac became the envy of the world power of his day by just obeying God. Thou shalt not go down to Egypt. And it's too by. And it's turn around year came. Many of us here tonight, this year shall be your turn around year. Yeah. As you choose to line up with the truth on every aspect of your life, the truth, and nothing but the truth. But it's not enough to gain access to light. You must walk in the light for the light to have effect. We must walk in the light. If you put your torchlight in your box, it has no effect. You should be walking in darkness. You still be stumbling. So it's not enough to write what you have found in the book, write in your note. It's important to put it to work. The effect of light is in walking in it. If you are not walking in the light, it has no effect. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. The word says, For you are sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. It's a thing to walk in, it's not a thing to assume. It's a thing to walk in. Don't you think to assume? I had God say to me years ago, it's now 40 years. My son, there's a place for you on top if you're interested. I was in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. If you didn't hear to my voice, it was actually what I tell you to do. I will set you above all nations of the earth. He said, there's a place for you on top if you're interested. I said, I'm interested. He said, whatever I tell you to do, do it. You don't have to struggle. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. And what he tells us is the book. This is the manual. Whatever I tell you in my word, do it. Dreams may fail. Visions may be fake. But whatever I tell you in my word, do it. There won't be any believer on earth who lives by the dictates of scriptures without a great future. There is no believer on earth who will live by the dictates of scriptures without a great future. And what happens? Darkness can't stop the way against light. Can darkness set a barricade against light? As light approaches, darkness gives up. It gives way. That's why you can't be walking in the light and be stranded. You can't be walking in the light and be stranded. Tonight is your night. Yeah. Tonight is your night. Yeah. That makes it simple for me to allow the world to dictate my steps at all times, without being coerced. Hear what he said. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delights himself greatly in his commandments. His seed also shall be met upon the earth. The generation of the oppressed shall be blessed. Who went and she shall be in his house. And his righteousness endured forever. He has his past, is given to the poor. His righteousness endured forever. His son shall be exalted in honor. The wicked shall see it and not with his seed. But the desire of the wicked shall perish. That means when you're walking in the light, forget about the enemy. <laughs> forget about the enemy. Light will render them helpless. 
the light in which we are walking will render them airplanes. It's your turn for a change of story. I've said this several times, what we know does not change us. It's what we do with what we know that does. What we know, even what we preach doesn't change us. It's what we do with what we know or preach. It doesn't. He said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. But you are deceiving your own self. James 1, 22 to 25. If any man be hearer of the word and not a doer, like a man that looks at himself in the mirror, he walks away and immediately forgets what kind of man, man of man he looks like. But if anyone choose to continue in the world, he not being a forgetful we are, but a doer of the work, that man shall be blessed in his deed. Mm. A doer of the work. So walking in the light is work. Walking in the light is work. Walking in the light is work. I wrote a piece sometimes titled The Agony and Triumph of Walking in the Center of God's Will. I mean, you, you, you just know you have to do it even when it does not appear convenient. Yet you have to do it with delight. When those things appear convenient. Jesus saw the cross, he said, if you will take this from me, please do. At the point, he said, look, I'm not hearing anything, but let that will be done. He went in. No one will miss God here. Yeah. Why call you me, Lord, Lord, without doing what I tell you to do? It doesn't make a difference. No matter how hard you pray, if you're not walking in the light, you can't deal with darkness. Obedience <laughs> is key. Obedience is key. And why call ye me no law? And do not the things which I say. And do not the things which I say. No matter how much grammar you speak, if there is no power, you can't have light in your house. Even if you're a professor of lighting, <laughs> it doesn't matter. We believe in prayer, we believe in fasting. We are in it. Jesus taught us to do this. But outside obedience, nothing works. Nothing works. He said to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. May we all receive afresh tonight the grace for delightsome obedience to everything he teaches us in our private devotions and the things he teaches us through the ministry of teachers and pastors and prophets and apostles that are in the world and through anointed materials and resources that we come across that help to enlighten us by the light that those individuals have caught, may we receive grace Amen. to walk in obedience with such. Amen. We have no wine, they said. Mary said to them, whatever it tells you to do, do it. And they did it without any pressure, without any pressure. And they had sweeter wine than the one they bought with their money. That's how amazing raw obedience can be. That's how amazing raw obedience can be. Obedience may be costly, but the end result is priceless, priceless, priceless. You check Deuteronomy chapter, 20, uh, chapter 28 and verse 1, all the way to 13, you see the blessedness of obedience. The qualifier, covenant there is obedience. You observe to do what I say. I will set you on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings will come to you and overtake you. You will be blessed in the city. Obedience, obedience. Facilitating all those blessings that no effort can generate, no effort, no skill, no strength. It's your turn. Yeah. It's your turn. Yeah. Here was a blind man that came to Jesus and he said to him, go to the pool called Siloam. He has never seen. He was born blind. 
Uh, won't you ask a question, how do I get here? You find out. <laughs> What's the difference between the water here and the water in Siloam? Be asking question. <laughs> Go to Siloam and wash. He went and washed and came back saying, raw obedience just terminated his lifelong frustration. May you receive grace to step into that. Yeah. That's in John chapter 9 and verse 1 to 8. Now, these individuals are frustrated fishermen. Jesus appeared to them. They didn't know he was the one. Children have you any mate? They said, none. Cast your net on the right side. Now, the question is, what is the difference between the right side and the left side? Be asking. <laughs> your blessing is on the side he asks you to cast your net. <laughs> if you cast it on the left, you have nothing. Cast it at the back, you are in trouble. Therefore, beware. Let's by any means, as Satan beguile Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity as in the gospel. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Raw obedience can transform any destiny. Raw obedience to the world, raw obedience to the world can transform any destiny. So, impact in the kingdom is not a function of luck. Skill or connection, impact in the kingdom is a product of applied revelation. What do I call it? <laughs> impact in the kingdom is a product of applied revelation. God shows you what, and then you apply yourself to it. You engage with it. You put it to work. Then you begin to impart the word around you. You look at the scripture, Daniel 11, 32. And they that do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt with flat trees. But those who do know the covenants of their God, they shall be strong. And they shall do what? Expert. So it's by the covenant of scriptures that we do exploit. It's by the covenant of scriptures that we do exploit. It's by the covenant of scriptures that we do exploit. For those running around with cheap money, can I tell you something? Wealth gotten by vanity shall diminish, for it that gathers by labor shall increase. His blessings makes rich and he has no sorrow. You are at ease. That's the realm you are entering into. The realm of pressure-free progress. Pressure-free progress. Amen. That's your new realm. Amen. That's your new realm. Amen. That's your new realm. Amen. And that's your new realm. Amen. The covenant highway may appear slow, but it's ever sure. It may appear slow, but it's ever sure. It may appear slow, but it's ever sure. Is it not better to be slow and be sure than to be fast and fall. No one shall be a fall away here. Amen. We shall all make it to the end. Amen. Every provision of redemption has conditions to meet for delivery. It's when we meet the condition that we call it a covenant. Amen. Now, for instance, in the school of wealth, he said, Thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is that give it the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant. That is why unto thy fathers as it is this day. So <laughs> you want to step into that wealth provision, you better step into that covenant. You don't step into that covenant, you'll be wishing for life. I found it 42 years ago. I stepped into it, and it's working. Always working, ever working. The days of begging to find what to eat, they are over in your life. It's just finding it and following it. Finding it and following it. It makes all the difference. All the difference. I'm yet to consult or knock on anybody's door this ministry is now 41 years, I mean, 43 years. Hello. 
can you help? In the name of Jesus, as you keep engaging the covenant of scriptures, you'll never get stranded. I caught a covenant with Jesus on Matthew 6, 33, back in 1976. The Lord showed me, it was so bright. But seek ye forth the kingdom of God in his righteousness, and all these things that others are dying to get shall be added to you. I heard it from his mouth for the first time. Things that others are dying to get shall be added to you. There is no single thing of value in my life that I prayed for. I just committed myself to the term of that covenant, and it's never stopped adding them. In part, it's not a function of struggle. No. They that believed have entered into rest. It's your turn to enter into rest. It's your turn to enter into rest. It's your turn to enter into rest. They that believed have entered into rest. Now, your, your excuse is not withstanding. Just believe what he says. And prove that you do by obeying it. Praise God. When I say I believe, even the devil believes and he shivers. But you believe, obedience is the validation of your faith. What you don't obey, you don't believe. So what you don't obey, you don't believe. What you don't obey, you don't believe. What you don't obey, you don't believe. Now, some 41 years ago, October 1, 1983, I was with the Lord um, on a timeout. And as I sat down under that tree, I had him say to me, my son, I'm committed to leading you. You are committed to following me. Isaiah 48, verse 17. When God wants to speak to you, he turns his word to your personal address. <laughs> he said, Thus said the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I'm the Lord, thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. He said, my son, I'm committed to leading you if you are committed to following me. I said, Lord, I'm committed. Okay. You can't lead yourself into the world of empire. Too. He has to lead you. He told Isaac, thou shalt not go down to Egypt. That was everybody's traffic. Everybody was heading there. Thou shalt not go down to Egypt. Genesis 26, 1. Thou shalt not go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land, which I shall tell thee of. And Isaac dwelt in that land <laughs> and met some stiff oppositions, but he didn't run away. And a year came in that place. Isaac sowed in the year. And <laughs> verse 12, and Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man went forward. The man was great and went forward and grew until he became very great. And the Philistine, for he had possessions of flocks, possession of herds, and great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. In the place that he directed him to, thou shalt not go down to Egypt, dwell in the land that I showed thee. Wait. Keep doing what I tell you to do. And a year came to sit on a year. May this year be on to around year. Everybody's going around the world today. You jump from Malaysia to Johannesburg to China and you come back empty. Why? You didn't let him lead you. You didn't let him lead you. Not all that glitters is gold. Allow Jesus to lead you. Allow him to lead you. Allow Jesus to lead you. Don't just invest in anything you see. Ask Jesus. Ask him to lead you. So you don't waste all of your resources, all of your energy over many years. Ask him to lead you. It looks simple, but how many are willing to? <laughs> Ask him to lead you. There is no provision of scriptures without conditions to me. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore I shall not want. 
He makes me to lie down on green pastures. He refreshes my soul. He leads me beside the still water. And he re restores me, he refreshes my soul. No pressure. Surely goodness and mercy shall be following me as I keep following him. So it's not a promise. It's a covenant. Let me shepherd your life and goodness and mercy only will be following you. So I'm saying to my son, nobody ever outgrows divine direction. Let him be the one leading you. He never leads around. He never leads backward. He always leads forward. It may first appear like you are going backward, is to scale the next height. Now, listen to me, it's to scale the next height. You can't scale um, a high jump by standing by it. You go backward a bit, and then you run, and then you lift. You are going up. It was as if God led Isaac backward. The opposition was stiff. He would dig it where they would feel it, dig they would feel it, dig they would feel it. Abba. Because God told him to be there, he stayed there. Can I have you say with me, God never leads backward. No matter how it may appear, he always leads forward. From this time, I'm going forward, following his leading for my life. From this time, I'm going forward, following his leading for my life. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's a brand new day for us. So we don't wait for impact. We engage with the covenant terms of scriptures for impact. We don't wait for it. Jesus said in Luke eleven forty nine, 49, or Luke 12, please, 49 and 50, he said, I've come to set fire on the earth. What will I, you already can do. I have a, a baptism to baptize with, and now my straighten until it be accomplished. Empath is always at a, at a cost. Empath is always at a cost. Empath is always at a cost. And the capital cost of empath is sacrifice. 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 Not to make a name, but to impart on lives, to be a blessing to people. Empath is not a function of chance. It's a choice you make. <laughs> if you will, I can do it to my voice and choose to observe, to do what I say. I'm committed to set you on high above all nations of the earth. The choice is yours. The choice is mine. It's not a function of luck. not a function of connection. It's a function of quality covenant work with God. Work with me, he said to Abraham, and I will establish my covenant with you. It's a work. So we understand that from the manual, we gain access to all things made for life and godliness. How many? All How, many things? All How many things? How many things? All things that are made for life and godliness. They are available to us in redemption. And we gain access by revelation. He's given us all things that mean for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us unto glory and virtue. All things. So there's nothing you and I will ever need that's not covered in that manual. All things. He said to Peter, go to the temple and speak to them all the words of this life. All. All the words of this life. Acts chapter 5 verse 20. All things. All things. All things. For example, the man was states that God is profitable unto all things, having the promise of life which now is and the one which is to come. 
godliness guarantees access to all things. That means for life and godliness. All things. That is godly living. That's living the fear of God. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be kindly minded is death. Romans 8, 6. Now, please be careful. Is this fallacy that states some are so heavenly minded, they are utterly useless. It's an aberration from here. There is no spiritually minded man that will not be relevant to his world. There's none. <laughs> There's none. You can't be spiritually minded and not be impactful in life. We have the examples of Noah, we have Abraham, we have Isaac, we have Moses, we have Gideon, we have Nehemiah, Paul, Peter. The list is endless of men who walk by the fear of God and have made, and made generational impact in their lives. You are the next in line. You are the next in line. You are the next in line. There are divine secrets in the world, in this manual, that can launch any covenant child to realms above all nations of the world. But interestingly, every kingdom secret is an open secret. Come on now. Every kingdom what? Secret is an open secret. Every kingdom secret is an open secret. Every kingdom secret is an open spirit. Unto us is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Who are they? We that are inside, the redeemed of the Lord. is given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Mark chapter 4 verse 11. Mark, Matthew 10, 27, he said, what I speak to you in darkness. Speak ye in light. There's no secrecy in the kingdom. And what you hear in the air, that preach you upon the house doors. Every kingdom secret is an open secret. Every kingdom secret is an open secret. Paul said, he said in chapter 3 of Ephesians, verse 8, very simple. Unto me, who am least than the least, the least of all sins, this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and watch verse 9, and to make all men see. How many? Amen. To make all men see. Stop reading negative meanings to breakthroughs. They must have seen something you are here to see. Endeavor to find out. The secrets of men are in their stories. Endeavor to find out what they may have seen that's opened up things to them the way it is. So there are no private revelations. What I say to you, I say to all. No private testimonies. That my right, I, have I taken as an heritage forever. Every testimony that somebody else shares is a pointer to your heritage. Psalm 119 verse 111. It's a pointer to your heritage, a pointer. God who did it for that has it in store for me if I will line up. If only I will line up. You'll never be stranded again. Yeah. Don't despise prophecies. I mean, don't, don't despise testimonies. Those who do, never have them. Don't read negative meanings to testimonies. Find out what the individual did. If you're interested, follow suit. If you're interested, follow suit. If you're interested, follow suit. 
Your interests had followed suit. You'll never be stranded anymore. No private faith. The word says, don't be slothful. Or followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hebrews 6 and verse 12. There is nothing that God does with one that's not available to another if only we line up with the same steps that those individuals must have found from the world, must have found from the world, and have followed it. So spirituality does not bring people down. It raises people. Whatever is from above is above all. These last days, you see the rise of giants Amen. in the body of Christ. Amen. The way it has never happened in history. Amen. May your place not be lost. Amen. May your place not be lost. Amen. Now I can crack this joke before I finish. For example, how utterly useless are the following world-class universities? Oxford. That's an Anglican route. 928 years. The value is growing. Cambridge, 715 years. Has Christian root, has a spiritual background. That's how useless it can be. Now, Harvard, 388 years, is still causing waves. Now, all these institutions had, you know, a theological background. They were set up to equip ministers to be effective and now see the impact in the world at the end of the day. You must not be apologetic about your spiritual stand. You must not be apologetic about your spiritual stand. It's your way up. Most of the founding fathers of America are offsprings, who are offsprings of Oxford, I mean, of uh, Harvard. Most of them. You find them in Tonnage, Yale University, 323 years, founded by the Connecticut colony, you know, uh, <laughs> a strong ties with the congregational tradition. University of Pennsylvania, founded by Benjamin Franklin, and has its roots in Anglican Church. Princeton, founded by New Light Presbyterian, is 278 years. And they are there. Spirituality is a plus. Any day, any time. You can't be walking with God and be a washout. Mind your walk with God. It's a brand new day. 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 Yeah. I can tell you this, an awakening is coming to Nigeria. Yeah. It has started already. Yeah. The impact will be growing. Yeah. Young men, don't run from your place of destiny. As a bird wanders from her nest, so it's a man that wanders from his place. A displaced man is a frustrated man. Abundance of opportunities are for you in your place. So find your place and abide there. No one will end this journey in regret. So. Yeah. You will not end your journey in regret. Yeah. I have this story of um, um, South Korea. 1945, South Korea had 4 million, um, I mean, 12 million population. It was among the poorest nations of the world. And that time had only 400,000 Christians. A per capita income was $50. But by 1985, 40 years after, 40 years after, population has grown to 48, 48 million. And now, number of Christians, by the awakenings that took place, 12 million. At uh, this time, it jumped up. Per capita rose to 7,000. And South Korea became 
13th industrialized nation of the world, from the far behind. That's the effect of spiritual awakening. Nigeria is about to experience something. Yeah. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. May your place in this move not be lost. Yeah. May your place in this move not be lost. Yeah. May your place in this move not be lost. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Every true spiritual awakening all through generations, usually impart positively on families, communities, and nations. Not noise-making, but life-transforming awakening. We are God's people come face to face with the realities of God and want to live a life that pleases Him. It always imparts on human communities, all through history. So the story of South Korea was an offshoot, an offspring of spiritual awakening. We are going to have it repeated here. Yeah. From 1.6% of Christians to 25% of Christians changed the story of that nation completely. You are a plus, not a minus. Yeah. You are a blessing, not a burden. Yeah. And in the name of Jesus, we are going to be together to see a brand new nation. Yeah with everybody making his input Amen. to make it happen. Amen. I see amazing employers of labor here. Amen. I see amazing number of employers of labor here. Amen. So spiritual awareness has always played a part in human civilization since the beginning of time. Therefore, to all my colleagues as I close, in ministry and particularly, all upcoming ministers here. I have the following admonition for you. Beware of serving other gods. It will rob any believer of his place in space. Beware of serving any other god. It, it can rob any believer of his place in space. We all have a place out there above all nations. Or following under God can rob any one of it. If you check Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 14, it said, The condition for these blessings to keep going is that thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I commanded thee this day to go right to the side or to go after other gods to serve them. It's a condition to maintain the flow of those blessings. Now, when you talk of other gods, you just think about idols. But let me show you something. Yes, idols are there, they were, they were all kinds of creatures made by man, and they call them their gods. Exodus 12, 12, we were talking about the gods of Egypt, right? And then, um, but beyond that, there's the god of gold. He said they have committed the great sin. They have made themselves the I mean, gods of gold. Exodus 32, verse 31. Many are just worshipping Gold. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, these people have committed a great sin and have made them gods of gold. People have murdered others for money. Some have perhaps murdered their children. Some maybe their mother for money. That's how much havoc the God of God has done. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, it said, the love of money is the root of all evils, which some coveted after and have made themselves, pierced themselves through with many sorrows and have drawn, been drawn into foolishness and perdition. O thou man of God, flee these things. The God of God is holding human life by the throat. Leave it. Obey God, his blessings will flow. Keep obeying God, enjoy obeying God, his blessings will keep flowing. There is a law in the scriptures that will make gold look like dust. <laughs> Amen. That will make gold look like dust. Job 22 and verse 21. Acquaint not thyself with him, and then you'll be at peace. Thereby shall good come unto thee. 
The thief I pray did the law for his heart and lay up his word in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you shall be built up. You shall put iniquity far from your tabernacle. Then shall thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of offer as the sons of the brew. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense and thou shall have plenty of silver. There's a law that launches men to that realm of fortune. Mind that law, leave the rest to God. Mind that law and leave the rest to God. Mind that law. The anchor law is the law of giving. Mind it and mind it with delight and enjoy it. Try to put joy on the face of people. You can't say you love God without loving those around you. Those who love God love their brethren also. God is not a kalukalu man. I mean, God is a, a covenant-keeping God. Does what he says. No matter who preaches what, some will never pay tithe till they die. Now, where would the windows of heaven open? Beware of the God of gold. It destroys. Then there's the God of self-worship. Self-worship. They call it pride. Self-worship. Self-worship. Pride goes before destruction. We have seen it several days. Satan lost his place in heaven to pride. We saw Nebuchadnezzar became an animal through pride. We saw Herod eaten up by worms on his throne. I call it self-worship. Beware. Not to stop the flow of blessings and impact. Beware. These are cautions to take to sustain impact. These are cautions we must take to sustain impact. Number two, mind, imp mind impact and not pleasure. Mind impact and not pleasure. Mind contribution. And no possession. You want to sustain impact in ministry, mind impact, not pleasure. Mind contribution, no possession. If I do not the words of my father, believe me not. Jesus went about preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom, and resources were flowing in in response to the impact. If we have given you of our spiritual seed. I mean, 1 Corinthians 9, 11. If you are partakers of our spiritual things, and then uh, he said, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing that we shall reap of your kind of things? It's, it's normal. It's a flow organized by God. Not orchestrated by man, organized by God. I mean, this can be very fulfilling, sir. I heard God say to me, don't raise money, raise men. I mean, I, I had him by myself. And there'll be much flow into the ministry than you ever imagined. Less mind impact, less mind contribution for a man's life does not consider abundance of the things which he possesses. No one will remember you for what you have is your cup of tea, for what you add. I'm speaking to everybody now in church. <laughs> be addicted to value addition. Be there to add value. Be there to advance the kingdom. Be there to add value to men and women around you. Don't seek fame. Seek to retain the fire of the Holy Ghost. People will always gather to wherever the power is flowing. Seek it. Don't seek him and applause. Seek God's commendation in the pursuit of your God-given mission. We shall not lead people to, we shall not lead people to heaven, we shall be there ourselves. Yeah. All ministers who are here, I say we shall be there. Yeah. Beware of comparison one of one with another. Beware of comparison. Each one has his mission. You have your fingerprint, is different from another person. Let each one abide in his calling. 
wherein he is come. Abide there. First Corinthians 7, 20 and 24. Abide in your calling. There's enough in it. Every calling in Christ is a high calling. Amen. Abide there. Grace can take a man up. It takes meekness to stay up. May the spirit of meekness come upon each one here. Amen. So to my son, the next 25 years will be great. Yeah. There shall be no missteps. Yeah. So this church, the next 25 years will be great. Yeah. There shall be change of story every year. Yeah. And my prayer is that everyone in this great mission will make it to heaven at the end. Yeah. May the world tonight reposition us yeah. to make the most of our remaining days on earth. Yeah. May we all receive grace to remain spiritually minded. Yeah. in all leaders of our lives, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that God's grace upon this commission will keep multiplying. Amen. And may we receive grace to keep following Jesus. Amen. All the days of our lives. Amen. Every minister present here, you are changing level. Amen. Your ministry is changing level. Amen. Your spiritual life is changing level. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Together we shall see a brand new Nigeria. Amen. A brand new Nigeria. Amen. A brand new Nigeria. Amen. Your part in the making of it will not be missing. Amen. Another man will not take your place. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May each one here remain a part of this spiritual awakening. Amen. And keep investing and advancing it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Brand new day for this ministry. Amen. Brand new day for this ministry. Amen. Brand new day for your life. Amen. Brand new day for your family. Amen. Brand new day for your children. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. And blessed be your name. In Jesus precious name. In Jesus precious name. In Jesus precious name. In Jesus precious name. Abraham kept that walk for 100 years. Jesus, when I mean, God called him at 75, he remained in his place with God for 100 years. He went to heaven at 175. Moses had this mandate at 80. Stayed through the 120. Many have made it to the end. Paul made it to the end until he became Paul the aged. He was pursuing after souls. He was living for God. You will not falter. You will not falter. Do not falter. Amen. For all ministry gifts who are here tonight, please listen to me. King Asa brought a mighty revival to Judah. But after 20 years, he ghost. You will not ghost. Amen. Your ministry will not ghost. Amen. King Uzziah followed the revelation that came through Zechariah. For 53 years, for 52 years already. And afterwards, a ghost. You will make it to the end. 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 King Saul was God's choice and God regretted. After 40 years, you will make it to the end. You will make it to the end. You make it to the end. Amen. No one among us here will miss our place in eternity. Amen. 
And may the impact ordained for us as ministers, beginning from my son here and his wife, shall be fully delivered. Shall be fully delivered. Shall be fully delivered. Shall be fully delivered. The spiritual awakening country will keep changing level. We keep changing level. And the name of Christ will keep being glorified. Multitudes will be coming to the kingdom. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. If anyone came to this service tonight with any sickness or disease, I command your instant healing. I command your instant healing. I command your instant deliverance. If anyone came in here confused, now I decree divine direction. I decree divine direction. Somebody testified recently, 2002, he was set to travel out. And he came into that service, and I spoke a word in the open. I never knew who he was. I never knew anything. Why teaching? He left that service and said, no, this is not the way to go. And the fortune which he walks in today is amazing. Allow his word to direct your path. You never miss the road following Jesus. You never miss it. You never miss it. You never miss it. You never miss it. He would have lost his marriage to that tree. He didn't get visa for his wife, but he was going anyway. Well, Jesus rescued him. He lives in fortune today. And that's you. You never, never miss your steps. Now, I proclaim heaven's blessing on this platform. The word of life will keep flowing from here. No unsafe soul will come in here and remain unsafe. Every safe soul in this place shall be established. In the name of Jesus. For all of us who are involved in advancing God's kingdom here, get ready for supernatural favor. If you keep attending to your way, in the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. Lift up your two hands and give God thanks.